Peabody here, along with Sherman and Wayback. Wayback is a time machine. Sherman, a boy. I sent the Wayback machine for July 8th, 1888, just like you told me, Mr. Peabody. Good boy, Sherman. And now if you'll set the indicator for Richburg, Massachusetts, we'll be off. Off to witness the most titanic struggle in boxing history, the heavyweight championship battle between Jake Kilrain and the immortal John L. Sullivan. The way back, incomparable invention that it is, hurtled us back through time and space to the site of Sullivan's training camp. Hello? This is O'Hara, Sullivan's manager. I'd like to bet $5,000 on Jake Kilrain. Well, that's what I said. 5000 on Kilrain. Excuse me, Mr. O'Hara, but are you really going to bet against your own fighter? You're darn right I am. In John L's condition, he couldn't punch a clock. O'Hara led the way to an outdoor ring. There's your John L, flat on his back, and he's been that way all week. Too much trading? No, too much mustache. That mustache of his is so heavy he can't lift it. Between the three of us, we managed to elevate Sullivan to a standing position. Are you all right, Mr. Sullivan? He can't speak, lad. Too much pressure on the lips. Stand clear for a second. We'll see how he does. John, 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 my lad, why do you think I give you a razor on your birthday? This is serious, Mr. Peabody. The fight takes place in an hour. What fight? You mean the slaughter? Oh, if only there were something we could do. There is. What? Shave him. O'Hara put in an urgent call for the nearest barber, and ten minutes later... There, I how's that look? Not his hair. The mustache. Cut his mustache. And after another ten minutes... It's no use, mister. This man's a mustache. You want a cut. I'm a rule of five a pair of C's, a four combs, and a half a pair of tweeds. Well, I'd best be calling up Kilrain's manager and telling him the fight's off. Don't do that, Mr. O'Hara. Mr. Peabody will think of something. And, of course, I did. And they this corner up, wearing black leotards and pink balloons, John L. Sullivan. That sure was a great idea, Mr. Peabody. Those balloons are keeping the mustache up. Now, remember, Kilrain, keep away from that left balloon. I, I, I don't like it. I ain't never fought no balloons before. Don't worry about it. What comes up must come down. Yeah. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? I don't know. It just sounded like the right thing to say. The fight was on. Round one found the two antagonists more or less sizing each other up. Sullivan could hardly raise a hand due to his inactivity of the past week. And thanks to my talents with a brush, Kilrain was confused by three mustachioed opponents. How'd you get the black eye, Kilrain? I didn't see him hit you. He didn't. Th that left balloon did. Well, never you mind. Patience is a virtue. I like what comes up must come down better. For 30 grueling rounds, the battle raged. At that point, John L. Sullivan was slightly ahead. You fool. The judges took that round away from you. But why? I never hit them below the belt. No, but you hit them below the balloon. Now keep those punches on. Kilrain did just that. Unfortunately, by round 75, no matter how high he aimed, he couldn't score. It seemed that Sullivan's balloons had inflated slightly, making him immune to a ground attack. Come down and fight, Sullivan! Golly, Mr. Peabody, if John L. can keep away from Kilrain, he'll win a decision. Ah, uh, but fate proved otherwise, for John L.'s lofty position placed him directly under the power of the lights. Lights that gave off a staggering degree of heat. He's down! Sullivan's down! Oh! Jonel, get up! It's his mustache, Mr. Peabody. He'll never make it. Nothing in this world will make him rise. It was then I noticed a gentleman in the first row digesting a huge platter of corned beef and cabbage. And if John L. Sullivan were any sort of Irishman, he'd rise for this. Uh, would you mind if I borrow this for a moment? Thank you. Well, of course, the rest is history. John L. took one slight inhalation of corned beef and cabbage and turned into a raging tiger. Sullivan was the new champion. Fighter he was, Mr. Peabody. Probably the most famous of all time. True, Sherman. But his manager was equally famous. Mr. O'Hara? Oh, yes. He joined the Marines and became the most talked about celebrity of our time. I never heard of him, Mr. Peabody. Really, Sherman? You never heard of uh, Marine O'Hara? Ha, <laughs> ha.